So today we're going to ask the question, why isn't allopurinol helping my gout? Why am I still getting attacks despite taking this medication which is supposed to help my gout flares? Well, first for some background. So gout is the most common form of inflammatory arthritis. To be clear, rheumatoid arthritis is the most common form of chronic, persistent inflammatory arthritis, but gout is the most common form of inflammatory arthritis overall. It affects about 4% of the population. It is more common in men than women, and certainly gets more common as we get older as well. Now, gout is caused by high levels of uric acid in the body. And that can happen for a whole host of reasons. Feel free to visit our website or watch some of our other gout videos about things that we can do about that. But the key, once we have gout, to manage it is around two key concepts. One, to treat the gout attack when it happens. And you can find information about that, uh, again, on our other videos or on our website. But you also can prevent the gout attack from happening in the first place. And that's what we want to focus on here. Now, we do that by controlling the levels of uric acid in the body. And what we want to do is to reach a target at minimum of what's 362 micromoles per liter. That's how it's measured. Uh, in some countries, they have a slightly different way of measuring it. It's uh, 6 milligrams per deciliter. But essentially means the same thing. We need to get under that level of uric acid to control gout flares from happening. And it's really important to know that this level is not what labs report as a normal uric acid level. It's actually within that range. A uric acid level is reported by a lab could be 450, it could be 500. So even if you have a normal uric acid on a lab test result, that doesn't mean if we're trying to control gout flares that that uric acid level is adequate to actually treat, uh, to prevent the flares. So we do this most commonly, although there are some other options, with allopurinol. It is the classic, most commonly used medication to control uric acid levels. It is in a family of medications called xanthine's oxidase inhibitors, and essentially reduces the body's ability to produce uric acid. And by doing that, your uric acid levels can decrease. Now, the problem with uric acid, though, is that there isn't a right dose per se. The right dose of allopurinol is the amount that will bring your uric acid to the target level. So that 362 micromoles per liter number, or ideally less than that, even up uh, low, as low as 300, that's the right dose of allopurinol. If you're not on a dose of allopurinol that is bringing your uric acid below that number, it is not going to be effective it is not going to prevent gout attacks. It is critical to dose the allopurinol to less than that target. So the way we do that when we first start allopurinol is to take a, a dose of allopurinol that your physician, your rheumatologist, your family doctor starts you on, and then check a uric acid level by doing a blood test every four to six weeks. And we do that every four to six weeks until one of the following. So either we've reached our target, at which point we can just continue our allopurinol at the dose that has allowed us to reach that target, or two, if the maximum dose of allopurinol is reached, then probably we need to have a discussion with a specialist or to determine if there are other medications that we need to look at. And the maximum dose of allopurinol is 800 milligrams per day or if there are any side effects from the allopurinol. Clearly, we don't want to continue on a medication if it's causing other problems. The maximum dose does not, uh, isn't reached that often. Side effects are not overly common. So really, the key thing here is, again, to reach that target of less than 362 micromoles per liter. Otherwise, allopurinol isn't going to work. Unfortunately, it's more complicated than that, though. So even when we reach that target, it takes time for the allopurinol to reach its full benefit. 
it could take anywhere from six to 12 months to really start to notice a decrease in the frequency, duration, duration, intensity of gout flares. So it's really important not to give up on it, to continue on that allopurinol for that year uh, before saying, you know what, something seems wrong, it's not working. And even beyond that time, allopurinol only works if you take it. If you take it inconsistently, if you stop it for any reason, it's going to lose its effect. In fact, starting and stopping allopurinol, ironically, increases your risk for a gout attack around that time. So really, we want to get on allopurinol, find the right dose, stay on that dose, and stay on that dose long term to prevent those gout flares. And again, it's worth repeating, the allopurinol will only work if the uric acid target has been reached. Now, there are going to be situations where allopurinol still may not be effective, or if it's not tolerated, then it's really valuable to speak to your rheumatology team to determine another effective and safe treatment plan. Because when it comes to gout, there are many ways to control it properly if allopurinol doesn't work. And it is typically a disease that we can do a very good job of preventing those gout flares. And by doing that, also preventing long-term complications as a result of gout. For more information on gout or anything else related to rheumatology, please feel free to watch our other videos or visit us at Alberta Rheumatology.